Um, we're going to move on to the biceps tendon here last in the next uh, five to ten minutes. So uh, bi biceps tendon, we're, we've divided this into subluxation and tendonitis, and I'm not sure we necessarily have to do that but because the treatment algorithms are actually fairly similar between the two problems. So biceps tendon subluxation is a uh, recognized ca uh, cause of shoulder pain. Um, uh, I tend to think of biceps tendon fraying and sublux subluxation as uh, kind of one in the same. Uh, these are uh, associated with rotator cuff disease, so, so about 20 to 25 percent of patients with uh, a uh, full thickness rotator cuff tear will either have fraying or subluxation or instability of their biceps tendon. It's most commonly associated with subscapularis tears, um, so you're more likely to have an unstable biceps tendon where it dislocates medially if there's an injury to the upper rolled edge of the subscapularis because that area of the tendon gives a fiber contribution to the medial bicep sling. And remember from my earlier in the discussion today, the biceps tendon is stabilized by the sling itself, which is formed by uh, fiber's of the coracohumeral ligament, the superior glenohumeral ligament, the anterior supraspinatus, and the upper uh, subscapularis tendons. Um, the biceps tendon itself uh, originates off the supraglenotubercle and the superior labrum. Remember that it's uh, stabilized by uh, structure, uh, fibers from those four structures I've just mentioned. It does have a role in the shoulder as a somewhat of a dynamic stabilizer, although that's debated. Um, um, I think it does act weakly as a head depressor, and it does control derotation of the shoulder in, in overhead athletes. And the, and you know the uh, that's debated, but I think that's there's enough um, uh, at least history with the biceps that that might show up as an exam test uh, question. Um, patients typically have anterior shoulder pain. They may have position-related uh, clunking or clicking of the shoulder. Uh, this is an uh, intraoperative photo uh, that shows a uh, biceps tendon that's actually subluxated medially underneath the rolled edge of the subscapularis tear there, a tendon there. So if the upper rolled edge tears, the biceps tendon is rendered unstable and will dislocate medially. Uh, physical exam, uh, we usually look uh, for uh, biceps provocation tests. Uh, which have been described. Uh, the two most commonly used are the Jagerson's test um, and the Speeds test. The Jagerson's test is basically with the arm at the side, you resist forearm supination um, uh, with the elbow bent at 90 degrees, and you're looking for uh, anterior shoulder pain that radiates down the biceps. The Speeds test is probably a little bit more accurate, but actually requires a fairly healthy rotator cuff to interpret it. But basically, you flex the shoulder to 90 degrees, and uh, you externally rotate the shoulder and supinate the forearm so that the palm is, is, is directly uh, uh, facing uh, towards the ceiling. And what, to, what you want to do is either resist shoulder flexion or resist elbow flexion with the, el uh, uh, with the forearm uh, in the, uh, supinated in the palm facing upwards. And again, you're looking for uh, anterior shoulder pain. So those are the two most commonly described uh, tests. You can see a reproducible click or clunk when the arm is brought into abduction and external rotation, but that's a less consistent finding. You can diagnose subluxation on ultrasound uh, or MRI. Uh, the, the, ultra, the benefit of ultrasound is it is a dynamic test, so you can move the arm into external rotation and look for instability. Um, the advantage of ultrasound and MRI is you can look at the subscapularis, which is critical. Uh, biceps tendon subluxation, um, if a in my opinion, there's no role for conservative management of, of an unstable biceps tendon. Uh, I, I, you can, uh, maybe I'm misstating that, but you can do a steroid injection and hope that the biceps tendon ruptures, in which case the patient will feel better. But if they truly have a subluxation problem, uh, a rest, is, rest is reasonable. Uh, it does not respond to physical therapy. So the, these patients typically uh, uh, either require surgery or the biceps tendon spontaneously ruptures and their pain goes away. So uh, the options for management are, are, are either arthroscopic uh, tenotomy or, or tenodesis. My preferred treatment is an open subpectoral tenodesis. The take-home points about tenodesis versus tenotomy we'll discuss here on the next section, but uh, I think either are reasonable, and a lot of it boils down to patient preference or who you have in front of you. Um, biceps tendonitis is also a well-recognized pain generator in the shoulder. It is associated with both rotator cuff tears and subacromial impingement. Uh, this is usually tendinosis versus tendonitis. Uh, when the biceps ruptures, you get the classic Popeye deformity, as this gentleman is displaying on, his, uh, uh, on this picture here. 
again, the positive uh, test that you're looking for of speed in Jaegerson's test. Also, tenderness within the biceps groove actually can be fairly helpful. And in a, in a thin guy like this, palpating the groove can be help, help you localize the shoulder pain to some degree. Again, uh, this is diagnosed uh, on clinical exam primarily, but uh, MRI and ultrasound are helpful to rule out subluxation of the biceps and or rotator cuff tears. Um, uh, Non-operative treatment does work reasonably well for, if for tendonitis alone where there's not instability of the biceps tendon. So uh, steroids, physical therapy, posterior capsular stretching, rotator cuff strengthening can be helpful. Uh, again, uh, if they fail conservative management, um, you can manage them either with tenodesis or tenotomy. Um, the advantage of a tenodesis is patients have less cramping of their biceps. They don't have a cosmetic deformity. And some studies show a subtle improvement in supination strength. The advantage of a tenotomy is they heal, they basically, you don't have to have restrictions on them. So they get, it's a quick arthroscopic procedure. You snip the tendon, it drops down uh, to some degree in about 40% of patients, and it'll heal them in that location. You don't have to have restrictions on them. If they don't mind the cosmetic deformity, uh, tenotomy is a very reasonable option. Um, so uh, I think there are relative advantages and disadvantages to each. The Most of the uh, level, uh, most of the research dedicated to this is level three or four evidence, uh, and we lack really good randomized controlled trials. The randomized controlled trials that have been performed basically link this to uh, less cramping and slightly better supination strength with the tenodesis. Uh, some surgeons would argue that the benefit of a tenodesis does not really uh, justify the extra healing time, etc. cetera. Um, so that's debatable. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.